Just to give you some context, I woke up at 8 o'clock on my day off. I got up for a little bit to pee, and then I went back to bed, and it is now 11.40-something, I don't know. But uh, my dad and I saw the curtain rod, and I want to see how this looks. Good morning, noon, everyone. <laughs> I was actually looking everywhere for these little things. Like this was all of the fastenings, like well, wall hanging things that I kept from college. And I have these things that I still have not hung up. And it's a really big feature in my room. And I think I know where it's gonna go. Today is one of those days where I feel like doing my makeup and I think I am going to do the makeup that I use for whenever I cosplay as Elizabeth from Bioshock. Specifically Bioshock Infinite, not Barry Let's See. So here we go. I actually did follow another YouTube tutorial which I will link down below where they use Naked 3 and I do have Naked 3 but it's my mom's palette and I felt like doing it for a palette that is my own and it's early bird from Pretty Vulgar, which is all these very light pinks and it's going to give you the same effect. I've honestly been thinking about reposting my first makeup tutorial on here just for like the days where I feel like, like, you know, whenever I do feel like doing my makeup, how I would usually do it. But um, I actually posted that right after my depression video. But now that I've mentioned it, it's in existence. I might as well just repost it as another oh, October day. I could do that and just edit it so that way it just focuses on that. But anyway, today we're just starting off with Pretty Vulgar. I believe this is called Uncaged Eyeshadow Primer. And let's just dive right in. So first we put Unruffled in the crease. And I, oh, I know what we're doing. Okay, we're putting it in the crease, but we're making it a little bit higher up from the crease to create um, Elizabeth's kind of like doll eye effect, which from what I am aware of was actually pretty common in the Edwardian era. It's good to remember your, your eyes are sisters, not twins. No need to make them look the same. So when you go to do this one, remind you, just do your best. Only God can judge you, according to Miley Cyrus. All right, what else? Um, okay, so then we take an eyeliner brush, which is somewhere. Here we go. I like this one. And take Unruffled again and go a little bit underneath your eye. I, I think I just went for, like, the the outer corner down below here but don't make it as noticeable high phone again because we are going to come back here and do some more like underliner as well but um yeah i think it just creates a, a shape of the eye i guess to make it look younger i don't know i don't really know makeup i don't do it all the time so next i just take the same brush again and this time go for rise. So we did unruffled on the crease, now we're doing rise. And we're going to go on the outer and inner corners of the eye. I don't know if I wanna meet in the middle per se. It's gonna get covered up anyway in just a second. But um, yeah, all these colors are very light. And I kinda like that I, it makes me use a lot of colors in the palette already. Because since I don't really wear makeup enough as it is, um, it makes me feel like I'm getting a good use out of it by um, not just using like one or two colors. It actually makes me use five. So we're getting a good run for our money. 
Now that we have rise on there, next we are going to take ruffled, which is kind of a shimmer. It's a very light shimmer, kind of like a beige, almost pink kind. And then we just drop it right in the center and blend it out. And this really brightens up that, that doll eye we're trying to achieve. So all the way around that. Don't worry about touching the outer corner so much. Just focus on the inside, because it's what's inside that counts. This side's got to be a bit more shiny. Okay. Turn around, bright eyes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. So, okay. This one. Oh, what brush do I use for this one? I'm going to use this much brush. This one. Uh, well, it says e.l.f. eyeshadow brush, but I use it as a smudge brush anyway, just because it creates a really good, good edge for that. But next we're going to take Conquer, which, ooh, a little bit of brown. We're getting risky. Yes, we are. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of Conquer, go off the excess, and create a V right on the outer corner and blend it out. Now, really, we don't need that much. We're just creating a V to give us or dimension. Either way, we just blend it there. The trick is to try to be as subtle as possible because, to be honest, it looks like Elizabeth doesn't really wear a lot of makeup anyway. I mean, what in her solitude, in her songbird, um, dreaming of Paris, and all that jazz. Perfect. I like this. I'm, I'm liking where we're going. I like what I see. I like it a lot. I don't remember if we do liner above here, but I know we, we do take it below to where we went with ruffled and the lower lash line. And we don't do that much. We kind of just focus on like this quarter of the way down and we just blend it out. We try to make it look seamless, as it were. I might have went a little too far down on this one, so I'm just going to try to replicate it as best I can to make it look like this mistake was on purpose. You know what? I think I'm going to try to put it on the upper on the upper line just a little bit. Right here. So that way it pops the color out just a little bit. It's okay. This is makeup. Or as Angie would say, calm down with the tricks. Not everybody's a makeup artist. There's no rules. Just do whatever makes you feel pretty. And I feel pretty. Okay. Then the last color we do is Wink, which is this... Here we go. It was hiding from me. So the last thing I do to define this upper shape to go under the brow is Wink. Now, actually, in real life, I just I actually do this step first, but I think by doing it at the end right here, it just creates a softer finish. And I think I remember in the tutorial, in the tutorial, it also says to put it down here, just to like define that line that you wanted to make before. It gets it gets rid of that darkness that you might have created by accident. So here we go. I don't use mascara. I don't use mascara. I think it just make, it it just dries out my lashes. It makes them feel very itchy, and I just don't like it. But next, we're going to go with blush. We're continuing on with being very pink and very vintage-y with Pretty Vulgar. So this color is called Tinkled Pink. This is the one I use. So just take a little bit, and you smile, and you do what everybody else does with blush. You just... Go in there, and you just make yourself look real cute and real heavy. <laughs> you can see why this is why I don't do makeup tutorials on my channel. 
I'm not a makeup guru. I just do shit and hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I don't think that you would do this if you want, actually wanted to create an Edwardian look, but because I want to feel pretty today, I'm going in with a pretty vulgar highlighter once again. And this one is called Glimmers of BS, which yes, you know very quickly why I love pretty vulgar so much. So I just go up above where I put the blush and I try to make it subtle. Just very slightly go above Go above there, but try not to touch the eye. And I also like to go in and, I don't know why I like to do this, but I like to go underneath my hairline. I don't know, I just, I just, it makes me feel like I'm doing something I'm supposed to do. And then finally, I take whatever's left, or I just dab like a little bit, or take there, and go right on my nose. Yes, phone, you are very prominent. I am very popular. Or I just get a lot of emails, so right up there. Yes! And that's how I do my highlighter, which I'm very glittery. I'm very glitzy right now. But the last thing I like to do, and the color that I use for um, <laughs> Elizabeth from Bioshock is, well, I either use, well, I do use Pretty Vulgar, Bury them with a smile because it's my favorite lipstick in the whole world. It doesn't smudge and it stays on and it actually feels a little bit moisturizing without being drying. That's the whole point of being moisturizing so it's not drying. <laughs> You're going to have to forgive me. I either use Prim Improper or this color. And I feel like using this color today, which is Baby Doll against BS. Or, you know, baby doll against bullshit, which, yes, I am. Lovely. I'm so very lovely. <laughs> I actually got this cosplay off of a website called, I think it was called Mick Costumes, Miss Costumes, something like that. And, uh... I gotta be honest, the sizing chart wasn't really that honest. Like, the top is kind of tight, and then the bottoms are too big. Like, it just doesn't make sense. So, uh, if you're ever looking for an Elizabeth from Bioshock cosplay, um, just be warned. This is what you get from China, right? Like, it comes with the bow for the hair, but then, like, you, it, ha it gives you no way to attach it. So that kind of sucks. Uh... But you do get this little sash, which I will worry about in a second. But actually, and you may be aware of the good old question if you play the game, the bird or the cage. And I had chose the bird. And um, this is the one that it came with. But actually, years ago, I made my own out of a choker and some ribbon and a little bit of lace. And you can get this from their official merch store. <laughs> the hardest part is hooking it on and making sure that it's not tight to choke you to death, but also good enough so that way it stays in place. Yeah, it, it sits at an angle, but you know what? That's more realistic in real life. This is a cosplay, not a direct um, copy from the video game. Now, I never found a good wig because she... It's weird because in certain frames of the video game, she has dark brown hair, and then others, it's black hair. And then in Barrel at Sea, it's actually black hair. So, like, this is just difficult. It's it's hard, but you know what? This is me, and it's we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Now, the last part is quite difficult because you'd have to do this all night, and you'd have to find a good-sized thimble and some really good glue that's not going to irritate your skin. You'd have to do this. And this is very difficult because you know in the first scene where she goes, are you real? And like it reveals itself, you see? You see? It's difficult. And it's not like you can do this because you can clearly see your finger. It was cut off when she went through that portal. Don't you understand? Don't you see? This is difficult. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, see ya in the next of October.
Da 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 da! Haha! <laughs> Spooky scary skeletons! <laughs>